Hello everybody, now I'm going to demonstrate how to install and use Cloudberry Lab plugin for managed backup. Uh, as of now, we have implemented remote deployment configuration and uninstallation for a backup agent. So the plugin consists of two parts, LabTech script and a DLL library. The order of installation is super crucial. Uh, first you need to install the script and only then the library itself. Now let's go ahead and install the script. Uh, under tools, hover to import and click LTXML expansion. Now you have to select the script and click open. Alright, now let's go ahead and ensure that the script itself is there. Yep, here it is. Download and install. Alright, now we need to go, go ahead and install the Dilla library. In order to do so, under help, click plugin manager. Under advanced, under advanced, hover to manage plugins and click add plugin. Select the library and click open. Here you can specify the information such as name, author, category and so forth. Click save and close. Now you need to enable the library by clicking by right clicking on the manage backup and clicking enable. Now we need to restart the database agent and that will take a while. So just click yes and wait for the progress bar here to complete. All right, so now that database agent has successfully restarted, we need to close the laptop control center and restart it. So go ahead and log in using your credentials and click login. Alright, so now we need to register the plugin itself and there are two ways to do so, either through computer management screen or the system dashboard. We'll do it using the latter, so click on the toolbar dashboard here under config under integration select the manage backup tab and now you need to enter your API credentials which can be generated over on our manage backup service web console so under settings if you click general you'll get to this <coughs> settings panel and here you can generate your credentials so we're just going to type in a dummy password and click OK. So now that we have generated the credentials, we can go ahead and log in using those credentials. Alright, so now that the plugin is registered, we can close the window and proceed to installing the, our managed backup agent. So go to the tar your target's machine computer management screen. We're going to expand the Cloudberry Lab branch and expand the main office and let's just go ahead and install it on this computer. Click on it and wait for the computer management screen to appear. Under the settings tab uh, you can see the tile which is uh, entitled the same way our product is titled in the managed backup console. So we're just gonna select that and now we're fetching the list of installed programs on that target machine to ensure that it's not installed because it would make no sense to install the software if it's al already there. That can take a while. And if we actually ensure that this software is not installed, we can proceed to specifying the information about the build and so forth. Alright, so here we have the 
option to select the build we can expand the drop down menu and select the requisite edition uh, these this list is fetched from our management managed backup service console uh, so these are the builds that are available to the end users they can be seen on our console under downloads and downloads so here are all the builds that are available to the end users let's get back to the console so let's just speci specify the edition we want uh, we can also specify the user if we need it's not really mandatory since it's it's an optional thing to do let's just select this user and type in their password and click download and install so that will commence the process of installing the software we don't need to wait because it can be done in the background so let's just close that window and let's look at some other computers because uh, we can just let it install in the background and while it's doing so we can go ahead and work with other computers so let's do so by clicking on this computer and here we can do the same thing and now actually the software is already installed on that particular computer and if you remember on the previous computer we had to install the software by specifying the edition uh, user credentials and so forth but here the software is already installed and so we're just going to get a message that the software is installed and does not require to be installed again and it, it'll also show us the software version and the builds number yep so there it is the build has already been previously installed and we don't need to do that again obviously uh, we see the build version and the version number and we can go ahead and click uninstall to remotely uninstall the software and that'll initiate the delete command all right so as our program was being installed in the background let's go ahead and check if it has been installed so as, as you can see the progress bar has advanced and we can get a we're getting a message that the installation file has been downloaded and the script is being installed on the target machine when it finishes we'll get a the appropriate message and it'll also display us the logs that we can look through to see how the installation process took place Alright, so now that the software has been successfully installed and configured, we can go ahead and see the logs by clicking view log. And here we see the steps that were undertaken in order to install the script itself. Once you are done, just click OK and click OK. And that's it, you get the same message uh, with the installed build and the version's number. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for your attention.